was on your, on your mind, you know, when they told you that, you know, you can't talk to this guy or else you'll have to go home? We really celebrated that first date. Yeah. We had some wine, we had our first kiss. It was just wow. amazing. Yeah. Together we came from nothing to something. And it's because of you sticking by my side and loving me all the way. You're a blessing in my life. In a kuwajo tuongo nguvu, mina ito our presenter Ali, your entertainment PA. The A is always for amazing. Siku zote na TBD, kuwa kikisho kwa mana kuletea stories tofauti. And of course, today I'm joined by one beautiful and amazing couple. All the way, by the way, guys, they came all the way from Kisumu. Of course, they have a few things they had to do here in Nairobi. And of course, we decided to link up and do an amazing interview. Because, you know, I've seen them online and... I I was very interested to actually know their story. So basically, uh, they say, ladies first, so introduce yourself. Yes, I am Sylvia Bichanga, mm -hmm. the wife to this handsome man. Yes. I am 30 years old, yes. and I've lived here in Kenya for almost six years now. Wow, nice to meet you, by the way. Yeah, introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Kelvin Bichanga, mm -hmm. uh, 31 years old, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. Husband to my beautiful wife. Yeah. yeah. Guys, by the way, it's 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 two years, right? Yes. Almost two years? Yeah, in April we had our second wedding anniversary. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Since our marriage. Since your marriage. Yeah. Okay. But before marriage, of course, guys, you know, people have to meet, people have to date, and we are about to find out how did you guys meet? Who'll answer this? Mm. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think um, it, it will start with her. It will start with her. <laughs> yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so I came here as a missionary with my family, mm -hmm. and um, we had thieves the first week we were in Kisumu, mm -hmm. but it was not one of the thieves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, for <laughs> we forgot to lock our back door, yeah. so they came in and they stole so many things. Mm -hmm. So one of them was a laptop. So someone gave us a laptop, but it needed some work. Mm -hmm. He's an IT consultant, okay. so we took the laptop into his shop to be fixed, mm -hmm. and that's when I first saw him. Oh. So we didn't speak to each other, but I got weak in the knees, so really? I knew something was up. Yeah, wow. and I went home and I told my friend, I just saw the most handsome man I've ever seen in my whole life. Mm -hmm. So that's the first time we saw each other. Yeah. yeah. So for you, was it was it like love at first sight? Kabisa. Mm. Wow. <laughs> what about you? Now this lady has come, you know, uh, to fix the laptop and you've seen her. Yeah. Uh, what was your reaction? Would you say it was love at first sight? Yeah, I would say it was uh, love at first sight because um, it was actually the second time seeing her dad. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, when he came the second time, he came with this beautiful girl. Mm -hmm. And uh, from that moment when I just saw her, my heart skipped a bit and uh, I was like, I, I have to get this lady. <laughs> yeah, and that is how we so first... She, so that was the first time, yeah. that was the first time you, you, you saw him. But you uh, didn't speak. But you didn't speak. Yeah. When was the first time you guys now spoke and what did you guys basically talk about? I'm trying to remember the first time we spoke in person. Mm -hmm. We texted for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, through Instagram. Mm -hmm. I actually was friends with the girl who worked at the same mm -hmm. shop as him mm -hmm. because I didn't know his name. Mm -hmm. So I knew her name. So I went to her Instagram and she had over a thousand followers. But I was like, nah, I'm just going to find him. So I was no scrolling way. through all the wow. followers uh -huh. and I found him. So I DM'd him uh -huh. and I asked him if he would like to buy one of my iPhones I was selling. Uh -huh. um, of course it was just an excuse to <laughs> talk to him. I could have asked anyone else but yes. I was like ah, I'll just let him know where I am and then he can make the move if he wants anything mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I just told him I'm selling an iPhone and if he knows anyone who wants to buy it. So he said okay I'll check around. Mm -hmm. um, so then a few was it two weeks later he he no <laughs> he just texted hey mm -hmm. so i was like okay let me see there if he found go. he's like no i have not found anyone mm -hmm. um then after that he would just text every now and then mm -hmm. through instagram then i was going home uh, for my grandma's funeral so i was telling him like i want to be on instagram which was a lie mm -hmm. <laughs> but i just told him like 
here's my WhatsApp number. Mm -hmm. Let's just go to WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. So while I was in the US for my grandmother's funeral, we video called, mm -hmm. and that was the first time we talked like face to face. Face, -to -face. Yeah. Seeing each other. So this whole time you have a crush on her. You're just saying hi, how are you doing? Yeah. Uh, what, what was your, on your mind? Were you thinking of what you're going to tell her or were you taking things slow? Um, okay, okay, I was taking things slow because uh, she, she was white, she's white, up to, <laughs> she's yeah. even white right now. Yeah. So um, I didn't know how to approach her f at first, yeah. So I just had to take things uh, one step at a time mm -hmm. and uh, i'm so glad that um we kept on like uh, talking and communicating because that's the most important thing mm -hmm. to communicate all the time so yeah i i felt something and the whole time i could text with her uh at times you know with the time difference by the way um i could stay even up until two wow and um it's, it's, it's like morning uh, it's like uh, d during the day at the place that it's extremely at night can, yeah. because of those uh, time, difference. time difference so but um those uh, the love kept on growing and growing yeah so at what point did you you know did you ever ask her to be your girlfriend or did you ever ask her if she wanted to date or did it just happen yeah, I, I did. You did? Yeah, I just wow. told her that uh, I think I'm falling in love with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and... Uh, um, sh what did she say? What did you say? <laughs> I was like, oh boy. <laughs> it's like I really had a crush on him and I was all in, but then when he said that, I got scared. Mm -hmm. Because like, okay, now I can't just back away whenever mm -hmm. I want to, but he's also involved emotionally. Mm -hmm. So it was a little bit scary and to add on top of that, my family didn't know about it mm -hmm. because the mission I was working with, we were not supposed to date while we work with them. Okay. So I was doing something I was not supposed to do. Mm -hmm. um, so that added a factor to it that scared me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. But part of me was still excited and I just wanted to see where it was going to go mm -hmm. so I just kept it as my secret and we would text and when I got back to Kenya um, it's when we met up for the first time, for the first time. Now you went, did you guys go for a date or something? yeah we did mm -hmm. but um, you know we met in 2017 mm -hmm. then she went back to the US um, then uh, she came back uh, in 2018 so we didn't date in 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, talking on the phone. Yeah, and it was like uh, she was hiding it from her parents. Mm -hmm. And in 2019, mm -hmm. that was like after they f came to find out, out about us talking, mm -hmm. because we had to like, uh, we had a talk mm -hmm. and uh, we came to an agreement that uh, she just needs to tell, to tell the parents mm -hmm. about um, what we are doing you know mm -hmm. communicating mm -hmm. and uh in 2019 mm -hmm. she was sent back home mm -hmm. because of you <laughs> because of me <laughs> but it was like um, it was a choice like um, she was asked like um, it's either you stop texting or communicating with um, this guy mm -hmm. or you go home Cindy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, kind of. Yeah. Kind of. It was kind of something like that. Yeah. But uh, she chose to go home. Yeah. So then we gave it close to a year okay. to see if uh, we will forget about each other, according to them. But um, for us, we still um, kept on uh, communicating. Yeah. But uh, under some some rules, you know, we were supposed to obey some rules. Like um, we only com communicate. Is it once or twice? Once a week. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, still hard on wow. my side yeah. because she was still like miles away. Yeah. But yeah, that is how uh, it has been up to that point. I think she has to add something. Yeah. So, so what, what, what are you feeling and what was your, on your mind, you know, when they told you that, you know, you can't talk to this guy or else you'll have to go home? Um... There was a lot I was feeling at that point and a lot happened up before that point yeah. actually. Mm -hmm. To take it back a little bit, yeah. um, after I came from my grandmother's funeral, I met him for the first time and I brought him like 
a t-shirt I think I brought him a t-shirt like featuring my home state in the US um, and I told my parents I'm gonna go do my nails but in reality I did that later I met up with him first I gave him the t-shirt it was our first time meeting in person um, so yeah then we talked mostly via phone but I was now getting excuses all the time to go to town mm -hmm. then I would meet up with him then go get my groceries meet up with him so we were meeting at a certain park behind the place where he worked so we did that for almost a year mm -hmm. and then like you said we agreed I talked with my parents which that was a whole nother situation yeah so I'm close with my dad so I asked my dad to go out for supper there's something I want to tell him and for him he knew I was thinking about going home um, so he thought that's what it was so I just told him because by then I had been caught twice texting with him and they would tell me like delete his number you're not supposed to be doing that so by then they knew she's yeah she has a crush on a guy here um, but they knew I had stopped texting him. So I took my dad out for supper and I just told him like, I'm not here to, to say that I'm sorry that I love him, but I'm just here to say I'm sorry that I've hid it for so long, but I am still texting with him. And um, yeah, I just told him like, I want to see where this goes and I would like to have your support to to stand with me as at least give me a chance to get to know him. So he told me you've put me in a difficult situation because I'm working for a mission who doesn't support that. Like you're not supposed to be dating while you're here. So he told me most likely if I present this situation to the mission they'll send you home. So I told him I don't want to give them that power over me because I'm stubborn and independent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I just told him, let me make that choice for myself. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be sent home, but I want to choose to go home. Mm -hmm. So the news came out, Sylvia has a crush on a local guy. And you know that mission has been going for 30 years yeah. and this has never happened before. Mm -hmm. So we were the first couple to try this. Yeah. So. I just, everyone knew Sylvia has a crush on a local guy and she decided to go home. So, but if I wouldn't have decided that, I would have been sent home. So yeah, that's then when I went home for a full year. My parents told me, go home. At first they told me, don't communicate with him. But I told them, you know so well, if I don't communicate with him for one year, it will fizzle out. So my dad then told me, try to keep it to once a week, mm -hmm. which that kind of went by the wayside as well. Yeah. But I did go home and we would try to go a whole week then he texts and he's like okay I miss you I can't do this anymore <laughs> so then we'd video call and my dad told me he said go home for a year if in one year you guys still love each other I will look into it wow. so they came home six months later their time was up here and they came home for good mm -hmm. so six months after they came home my mom and dad flew back with me to Kenya mm -hmm. and they spent five weeks here with me and we rented an Airbnb and he stayed with us and we got to meet his family and then after that trip they now blew to date. So before I went home we had our first official date. Yeah, see, 2020. From 2017, yeah. you know like after three years you guys are getting an opportunity to just sit down and talk without fear of anything. How was the feeling like? Um, such a patient man. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, um, when that day it finally came uh, for 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 us to go for a, for a date, um, it was just something that I'll never forget because uh, it's something that uh, we've been both of us uh, we've been waiting for it for we were like uh, we've always been waiting for it and the time is here so we really had some good time on that day and uh, yeah I, I still can't uh, forget about that that day you know wow. yeah and, and I know you guys are dating your family has uh, met your family has met his family you know how, what, what was the reaction like and d did the families love each other did you say? Yeah, they did. Um, especially, I think, for his family, after they knew we had now our first date, it was okay for us to be in public together. 
We really celebrated that first date. Yeah. We had some wine, we had our first kiss. It was just wow. amazing. Yeah. Um, and I think my family was happy with his family and his family was happy with my family. So they really got along well. Wow. Uh, now, uh, at the time that you guys have started dating and it's gone public, and uh, what would you say, did, did you see a weird reaction with the people you know normally there are some uh, prejudice or let me say misconceptions when people you know when you start dating someone of a different race people will have to will say things will do things did you did you experience such uh, personally um, I, I never felt something like that from from other people because uh, you know dating her it never even like there wasn't anything about the color skin mm -hmm. it was just like uh, dating a normal person yeah. it, you know how feelings work yeah. and uh, we could just walk things like that and um, from the public the only thing that uh, we could get from the public was uh, you know people could be praising her like uh, saying hey you have a, a very beautiful lady things like that yeah. but uh, in terms of, of uh, skin color I I never experienced anything about uh, from from you know from other people. Oh. Yeah. They thought I was they thought I was a nun though, yeah. because of wearing the head covering. Yeah. They when we would meet at the park, they thought I was a nun. So whenever we were done talking and he would give me a hug, you could find the picky drivers were all yelling, where 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 where, <laughs> leave that lady alone. <laughs> Thought you were a nun. Mm, wow. Yeah. Interesting. But <laughs> that was uh, mostly before we started uh, dating public. Yes. officially yeah. in public, yeah. when we were still going to meet up in in that uh, secret park. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's a public park, no, no yeah. public park, not a, a secret park. Yeah. yeah. yeah but um. um <laughs> it was just. It, it it looks like it was really beautiful. But I wanna know for how long did you guys now date until you chose, you know, to put a ring on it? Um, I think it was around one year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that we officially dated mm -hmm. until we got married because it was during the time of COVID. Mm -hmm. So we had actually started a fiance visa, mm -hmm. but then COVID hit, and my attorney was saying like, I don't know when he'll be able to come over. It might be years. Mm -hmm. So by then we had already waited one year for that visa. Mm -hmm. So we just changed our plans mm -hmm. and I decided to move over after flights reopened. Mm -hmm. I moved over and we just got married right away. Mm -hmm. And then three months later we were called for the interview for the other visa. <laughs> but, <laughs> but because I was now married, we had to apply for now a spousal visa. So now it's the past two years we've been waiting for that visa. Wow. Let me, let me just ask something. You know, most people, uh, th this is a, a question I, I love asking couples, because most people here in Kenya, the culture is, you will see people date for two, three, four, five, six years and b before they decide to get married. But for you, you did it for a year. Was it because you are too sure that, you know, this is the person I want to spend the rest of my life with? Or would you say, it is what it is? Okay, um, okay. according to um, her religion, uh, you know, you couldn't be... <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny with yeah. their religion and uh, let me say culture, culture in that um, they you find people they just date for almost even a month or three months mm -hmm. then they they get married yeah. so for us uh, dating for a year that was that was long for, for her you know yeah. <laughs> tell us a little bit about that you know whatever he's saying um, well, it makes a big difference because uh, we had already known each other quite a few years yeah. previously. Um, but also because of our, I can't really say our religion, but because um, the way we believe as Christians yeah. for us, um, there was no intimacy before yeah. marriage. So knowing each other for now, three years, you're ready to take that next step. Yeah. 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 I get it. I get it now. I, I was I was really trying to comprehend yeah. and understand, but now I totally get it. Now that you guys, uh, uh, how was your marriage like? How is like uh, the wedding like? The wedding, yeah. it was great. We got married at Rasinga Island. Mm -hmm. um, 
my dad had almost died of COVID, so. but he was able to make it over. Um, all my brothers were here, my sister was here, and all of his family was there, and it was just a great celebration of how far we had come, and finally we managed to get married, yeah. So it's, 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 it's officially over two years right now? Mm -hmm. Yes. What did you say? Uh, do, do you think dating is different from marriage, according to you? Definitely, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, 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 some things which you feel like, you know, when you're dating, uh, or maybe the expectations, you know, like when you're dating, you normally have some expectations. Are, are they still there in the marriage? You know, uh, like um, when you are in Evo, <laughs> you guys have married, mm -hmm. um, there's some of the things that you do mm -hmm. than when you guys are dating, mm -hmm. especially with the I do like to call it a uh, culture, their culture, you know, when you're dating there are so many things that you can't do. Mm -hmm. There's uh, a lot of limitation, like uh, mostly, uh, I don't know about kissing, but kissing is also part of it. Uh, and others, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so those are just the things that um, you get like uh, when you marry someone, yeah. So, so, so if yeah, after you start you, you start marrying, you feel like you're spending more more time with with with, with her. Yeah. Wow. What 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 would you say? Uh, you know, your marriage has been like for the past two years. Um, you know, there's a big difference between dating and being married. Mm -hmm. More so long distance. Like when there's a fight, mm -hmm. you just. Um, or maybe an argument, you just uh, maybe turn off your data and you have peace. Um, and then when you're working through it, then you can come back online and talk. Mm -hmm. But when you're in a marriage, you're together most of the time. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the struggle at times for us since being married is to know how to work through those things up front, face to face. Um, because for longer than we are already married, we were on the phone. Um, doing relationship through the phone. Um, sometimes you couldn't express yourself as much through the phone as you can in person. So making that transition from long distance relationship to in person has been quite a challenge at times and also beautiful. I always say it's beautifully difficult. Yeah. Amazing. Now, uh, what would you also say are some of the challenges that you've gone through, you know, in the marriage that, you know, you are really proud that you've been able to conquer? Um, I'll have to think on that one a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think the thing I'm most proud of us is how that we come from completely different worlds. Yeah. I'm an American and yet I'm not even an American. Yeah. I'm not an LA girl. Yeah. I'm this conservative person within the American culture yeah. and he's a typical Kenyan cultured person yeah. and we've managed to bring it together, our values, our convictions, our thought on um, success in life and our goals and bring it together in one common path. And to me, I think that's a great accomplishment. That's amazing. And now there is a time you were trending uh, because uh, you know people you you know saw you uh, in the streets hawking and selling some food. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. Um, well, that was a really crazy time of my life, and I can't wait to tell my grandkids about it. Yeah. Um, honestly, probably the best days of my life. I mean, I enjoy an easier life now, mm -hmm. but those days were just something else. Um, I remember the day I went broke. It, it was the first time I was broke, and I had like a panic attack. Because always growing up, I worked for my dad, he would take part of my paycheck and put it in my savings, so by the time I was 21, I always had a savings to rely on while I was working. So I remember the day I told him, Sawa, my account is now 0.00. .00. Wow. So he was so calm and he was like, Karibu Kenya. <laughs> and I was like, what does that mean? And he's like, See here, we live day by day. Yeah. You just, if you don't have extra, you don't have to stress, something will come up, you'll be fine. And he was trying to fix laptops, he was Ubering. 
But I was seeing like, especially the culture I come from, we work hard. We don't have housemaids, we don't have, we paint our own houses, we cook our own food, we even sew our own clothes. I came from a hardworking family, so I didn't feel okay sitting in the house. Yeah. Also my parents, as much as they have money, they would tell me, why are you not working? Why are you not doing something? So me and another Muzungu friend of mine, we decided, let's make some baked goods, let's like have a shop. We started beside the road, we had a table and a jiko. We started cooking and then they were like, you know, it's not really sanitary because of the dust, let's get a shop. So we got a shop and we could sell there and one day we just filled a bucket with food and we took it out into town. And within minutes, it sold out. Wow. So instead of waiting at our shop for people to come to us, we took the food to them. And it really increased sales. So that's how the hawking started. Um, after that, every morning, she would uh, come in, my friend, make the dough, make them, and then put them in the buckets, and I would take them out and hawk. Mm -hmm. For me, I was just working as any street vendor in New York City or somewhere like that. I never thought of it as something unusual until I woke up and I saw myself on the newspaper. Yeah. Then I was like, it's something unusual. Yeah. So then when I was getting calls from Citizen and NTV, I was so overwhelmed, like, why is it unusual? That yeah. was my question. Yeah. Um, that's how the Hawking thing came about. Wow. Wow, what, what what was your? Uh, I remember when they started, mm -hmm. and it was like uh, like the way she said, mm -hmm. a table and a jiko, yeah. not even a, a gas cylinder, a jiko. <laughs> they could uh, wake up in the morning, light up the jiko, mm -hmm. then they carry it mm -hmm. as hot as it is yeah. to uh, by the roadside, yeah. and uh, you know uh, just selling beside the road, it's not always good. So one week they did that by the roadside and. Uh, the second week, they were able to buy the gas cylinder mm -hmm. and uh, wow. and even to move to a, a better shop, yeah. you know, yeah. some place where it's a uh, it's a shop now, yeah. not beside the road. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and um, yeah, at first it wasn't like because um, I knew that is where we could get something from. So for me, I was just okay with it because it's something that. Uh, uh, where she comes from, it's normal. So, um, I I even helped mm -hmm. at the shop, especially when I closed my shop and I, I didn't have anything to do. By that time, I didn't even had a car to do, to do the Uber. I could just do the computer work at a, at a friend's shop. Then I come back, I help her to close the shop. Uh, later on, I also did. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you, you, you know Sampa, these vehicles that, uh, it's, a, they, it's a company that uh, deals with transportation, like uh, they, move from, they move people from Kisomo yeah. to Nairobi, yeah. Nairobi to Kisomo. So I worked for Sampa for... Like the NOAA vehicle. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I worked for Sampa for only one trip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Coming to Nairobi, then I went back and that's it. I was done. <laughs> you got really tired. Hey, yeah, because I didn't even know that I, I was uh, like when you drive all the way from Kisumu to Nairobi, you have to wait for your vehicle to be filled up, and uh, it took two nights, and I, I was done. So I just de decided to come back uh, to pick like people along the way back to Kisumu. So later on. Um, uh, we did now the I, I was working now full time mm -hmm. with her at the shop then uh, we had issues with the government because uh, she didn't have the work permit they needed close to a thousand dollars that is uh, wow. almost a hundred and ten yeah. US dollars uh, I mean Kenya shillings yeah. for her to work yeah. so it actually made us to stop the shop like to close uh, the shop down and that is when we bought now the car we got s some loan from her dad and we bought the car and I could do uber so that we could get something for our daily life yeah so that is our our life back then and, and, and somehow you guys managed to get into content creation uh, when was that 
Um, we started our channel around three months after our wedding, um, but it was just slowly growing. We were not making any income with it. Um, so it was during that time we were doing the hawking, but then the whole journey of hawking actually boosted our channel and then around the time that I was seeing the hawking wasn't making enough money and also um, the government had said I don't have a work permit so I can't work. Um, then we focused more on our channel and with the publicity our channel grew and it just gradually transitioned from hawking to the channel now full time. Yeah. Wow. And by the way I saw you guys on Miss Rachel's channel. Big shout out to you Miss Rachel. I know you're gonna watch this. Thank you so much for introducing me to them. They are amazing. So what kind of content do you guys put out there on their channel? Okay first of all the reason why we created our channel it was uh, to show her people on the other side, our life. Mm -hmm. It wasn't all about like uh, as part of the job or, or something. It was just to share our life story with her friends and families because you couldn't be doing and sending it to each each person, you know. Yeah. So YouTube was the only way to share it to every to them, like to everyone. So um, when uh, she became famous. And uh, but by <laughs> I don't know why she's laughing, but uh, you know, as time goes by, we we could get like uh, subscribers, yeah. and it, it took us close to um, was it six to to qualify first, yeah, six months. Six months. then um, two months later, we got I, I think two to three months, we got our first paycheck, mm -hmm. which was uh, close to 11,000, 12,000. But uh, we only got seven thousand, you know, with the yeah. Um, yeah. with the thirty yeah. percent off. Yeah. So we got seven, and we were so <laughs> very very excited about uh, our first paycheck. Mm -hmm. So uh, as time goes by, it kept on, you know, increasing, and uh, finally, Miss Rachi, we did a, a video with Miss Rachi, mm -hmm. and uh, it even boosted um, our channel. Thanks to Miss Rachel yeah. once more, yeah. and uh, also her going viral, mm -hmm. it also uh, boosted. So ever since then, we saw like, oh, we can we can make money out of this. So, and that is how we became like uh, fully Full into content. yeah. Wow, amazing guys! You can go and check out their YouTube channel. The link is in the description and also in the comment section. I've actually pinned it out there. Go subscribe to their channel. And also make sure that uh, you tell them that you've been sent by presenter Ali. Thank you so much, guys, for your time. I mean, I've had one hell of an amazing conversation. But if, before we leave, of course, I normally have to ask you guys this. What message would you right now uh, send to your husband as he is sitting right now? And just tell him in front of the camera just something beautiful. Okay. Um, husband. <laughs> Um, thank you for accepting me as I am and for loving me and for accepting my culture and my culture differences and honestly just for supporting me when we were both at our lowest and some people might have not supported their wives in being a hawker but you always supported me um, and together we came from nothing to something and it's because of you sticking by my side and loving me all the way, waiting for me all those years. I thank you for being who you are. You're a blessing in my life. So. Wow, amazing. What about you? Thank you. It's your turn now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, wifey, uh, I just want to appreciate uh, everything that you've done, your, all the effort. You've, you, you, you are a fighter. And uh, that's something that uh, I like about you. Uh, you're such a loving and a caring person. And uh, I will forever, for, 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 is it forever? I will forever love you. And I, I will always be there for you. Wow. And one last thing, I love you so much. Beautiful. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you so much. Now it's also your turn to t uh, tell uh, your fans and your subscribers something. Yeah, thank you guys for watching the video today and make sure to check out our channel. I do a lot of vlogs for our main channel and 
um, just our everyday lives, what we are up to, and yeah, I hope you guys will find our videos interesting as well. Mm -hmm. Amazing, Sana. I mean, I talk, presenter Ali, your entertainment PA, the A is always for amazing. As I have told you guys, the link is in the description and the comment section as well. It's pinned right there. Go subscribe to the channel and tell them that presenter Ali, of course, sent you. Thank you so much, guys, for your time. Thank you so much. It's very cold. It's a very cold morning, but they decided to come. They didn't fail, and they were not late. Behind the camera, ni Mwanangu Nguvu, and it was Frank, the director. I will see you guys in the next video.